Hello everyone and welcome back to the unboxing of Jazza's Jazzy Art Box. This is part two, so if you haven't seen the first part, which is just the initial unboxing of these items, it will be in a link in the description. But you do not have to watch that video to enjoy this one. So in this video I will be using these items to make a piece of artwork, and I will also be doing the testing of the items, which is the same thing, but yeah. <laughs> In the first video, I didn't actually give you a closer look of these pens. So here's a closer look at the fine liner from Graphics. And this is the 0.08 nib, which is a very large nib. And then I'll also show you this one, which is the brush tip. This is a lot thinner than I thought it was going to be. I should be able to get interesting line variation with it. Then I also did not show you this one, which is the Tombow one that I could not understand. <laughs> so this is the Tombow Fude no Suke brush pen. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. It actually came with this little measurement guide, which I'm assuming from this picture here is to do calligraphy. So you can have it all nice and spaced out properly. So this is obviously meant to be a calligraphy pen. So there's the brush nib. I also didn't open the Faber-Castell pencils. I was very happy to find that it had all of them already sharpened because I would have just had a super fast video of me sharpening every single one of these. They saved you from that. <laughs> they also included this expression blending card that is a lot thicker than I was thought it was going to be. It feels actually similar weight to the paper that's inside the sketchbook. Maybe a little thicker. I've never used this type of blending card, but I have used marker paper before, so I thought it was going to be similar to that, and it is definitely not. The marker paper that I've used before, the first one I ever used was this Graphics 360 translucent marker paper. And this one I was taught how to use in a class, and my teacher taught us to color from the back of the paper, which I always found to be quite weird, but it worked which I can show you in the sketchbook. Also, if any of you live in Savannah and are art students from SCAD, you should check out this place. It's called Starlandia. It is secondhand art supplies, but you can take your art supplies in and they'll give you store credit and you can go and buy new art supplies with that. Well, new to you art supplies. I wish I had found out about it sooner in my career there, but anyway. So this is a picture that I did with the graphics 360. I just taped it in here. As you can see, I directly colored on the back of it and the pigment seeps through to the front. I like the vibrancy of it and how you can mix colors and it doesn't look like they're mixed on the top because they aren't. They're mixed at the back. So this is the back of the paper and this is what it looks like from the front of the paper. I don't know if it's the incorrect way to do it or not, but it is how I was taught. And I've also used this Canson marker paper, which I used for my Inktober stuff, but as you can see, it's very translucent in comparison to the Express It blend card. I don't know if this one does the same thing as my other marker paper, where it has one side that you're supposed to ink on, because that other one has a front and a back side that you can clearly tell whenever you're drawing on it. There's a difference. But since this was Inktober, I didn't actually color any of these. They're all black and white. It's very flimsy paper that I was expecting, as opposed to this that's more like a Bristol board. Not Bristol board. It's like half the size of Bristol board. Anyway, let's start testing it. I think I'm going to start with the Expressive Blending card, and I'm just going to do the alcohol-based markers on it, just to check it out. I am going to do the actual artwork in my sketchbook, though. I think my boxes got bigger as I went. This is why you always use a ruler if you want stuff to be precise. I find it's hard to put things back into here, but that's okay because it's only whenever you're traveling that it needs to be secured. And if you're in a hurry, you can still close it up and zip it and everything will be fine, even if it's not in the rubber bands. <laughs> also, just in the previous video, I talked about this pencil and how I thought that I had had these before or something similar, and I found mine. So this is the one that I've had for years. 
hence having lost the tip, which I didn't show in the other video, I think, but there's a little eraser underneath. It's the same thing, the M301.5 millimeter. You can tell that mine's older though because the design's kind of changed. This is the new one and this is the old one. You know, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Point is, this I know is good because I bought it myself and have kept it for years. Back to checking these out. <sighs> no, they don't fit on the end. <laughs> At least it won't roll away. So here are all the colors. I'll probably just keep this as a color guide for me in the future. So I just noticed something on these fine liners. On the barrel of the pen, they don't have anywhere what the size of the nib is. So if I forget, I'm liable to put it on the wrong one. Right, here's a closer up view of the swatches in my sketchbook. I have my markers here, and you can see the Signo gel pen right there. It, it really does show up quite well over top of the marker, which is good. Then we have the Faber-Castell colored pencils here, and they are quite vibrant. I was very impressed whenever I was putting them on how vibrant they were on this paper. Very similar in quality, I feel like, to the Prismacolor color pencils that I have. And then we have the Graphics Fine Liners here, and the Tombow Fudenosuke, and the Tombow Dual Brush Pen, which I also used a little bit of the Signo on top of that. And we have the Color Erase right here, which, as expected, doesn't completely go to white when you erase it, but it's good enough. And the Zebra M301. So now it's time to go to the sketching process, which I actually did a little bit early because I had so much time between this video and I was on vacation for a little while and had my iPad. So I'll just go through the stages that I went through with you on here. So I just started with some you know, little warm-up sketches. Then I had the idea of someone sitting, drawing in a sketchbook, and then having like a bunch of colors cartoonily exploding from the page or seeping from the page, just because I wanted to figure out how to use all these colors that have been provided, since there are a lot of saturated colors. I also thought of just having someone like throwing paint, but then this came into mind. At the time of the first video, Spider-Man had just come out, and I love the movie, so it was like, what if I did like a little sketch of Spider-Man as a tourist? And I just thought it would be kind of funny and cute, uh, and having him asking for directions <laughs> or taking a selfie. So I went with the asking for directions, and I had like him, I was doing a sketch trying to figure out how he would be like hanging upside down in that iconic pose. So he'd be hanging down and asking someone who has a map and they'd be like pointing to where he's supposed to go. And I wanted to have him in like a costume. So he'd be in his Spider-Man costume, but also have stereotypical clothing on, like a Hawaiian shirt and a sun hat. And then I decided to make it in chippy form because I love chippies. So you have him hanging from, I put a lamppost here, but I don't think I'll actually put the lamppost in the picture. And I'll just crop it to where he's hanging from something. You don't know what it is. And he's pointing to the map. Then you have the other character pointing to where they're supposed to go. And I kind of wanted to give him like a stereotypical French striped shirt for the native. And you have his sun hat just like falling off his head but held on with a strap and his shirt coming down. I didn't think that it was obvious enough what was happening. So I added a little question mark and the arrow pointing and exclamation mark. It's this way. And I decided to have like a box of color to pop them out from the background. I thought about doing a background of Paris or something, but that was very complicated and I'm not very skilled with backgrounds yet. So it's like this maybe biting off a little too much. <laughs> maybe some other time after I've practiced with simpler backgrounds. Backgrounds. So, this is what I'm gonna try and re-sketch in this guy. Yeah. I'm starting with the blue color erase pencil to get my rough sketch down, which I will later slightly erase and then go over with the fineliners. 
I found that it was easier to work on Spider-Man's pose with the paper flipped upside down so that it was like he was actually right side up. Then I flipped it again when doing his clothes to keep them in line with gravity. I started the line art with the calligraphy pen because I liked how fine a line I could get with it. Using the felt tip side of the dual brush pin, I made a bold border around the characters. Then I used the brush tip half to make a square border in the background. I cleaned up some of the line art with the graphics fine liner. After putting the finishing touches on the line art, I erased the rest of the blue lines. The dust free eraser does make less of a mess, but it still leaves behind some debris. Still, it's probably one of the best erasers I've ever used. The Spectrum Noir markers go down well, they are vibrant and they do not bleed. The brush tip is easy to control, though I am more used to working with Prismacolor markers without a brush tip. These markers seem to be on par with those and the few Copics that I have. I use the pale tan directly on the blender to get a lighter color for the map. Using the colored pencils, I darkened the shadows and added some texture to areas like the hair. I added a bunch of highlights with the gel pen, maybe too many, but the white was going on so well I kinda got a little carried away. <laughs> Purple was the only color I'd yet to use, so I colored in the square in the background with it. I was a bit hesitant because I was not sure how well it would go with all the other colors, but I wanted to use all of the colors, so I just went ahead. I put down two layers going in different directions, trying to make the color look less streaky. To pop the characters out from the dark background, I outlined them with the white gel pen. Then touched up some areas with the fine liners where the white went a little over. Alright, there you have it. This is the finished artwork using all the contents of the Jazza's Jazzy Art Box. A little chibi tour Spider-Man. Getting directions. The paper held up well, it didn't bleed through to the other page, and all the different mediums worked well together. I tried to use every color. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more like this, you can subscribe to my channel, that'd be awesome. And let me know what you thought about my artwork, or just the contents of the box and how I use them down in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.